Holy holy holy. I'm just gonna do a different kind of video for my own <laughs> edification, exhortation, to get built up in the spirit. I just wanna do some praying and I'm gonna be praying uh, John chapter 17. Just reading it, I got the 26 translation Bible so we can just go layer upon layer into the depths of the word. Before I start though, I wanna read this out to you. This word of God says, uh, they are not of the world even as I am not of the world. You're not of the world, where are you of? Where are we seated? Where are we anchored? Look at this. The truth says that we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. We're seated above all the principalities and powers of the air. Because <clears throat> we are one in Him. And we're convinced that neither life nor death, nor angel, nor principality, nor anything can separate us from the love of God where we sit <laughs> in Christ Jesus. Nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. In Him is life. In Him we live, we move, we have our being, and in Him, like we don't have no need of the sun or the moon, because the real you is the spirit you, because you've been born again, right? You've been crucified, that flesh fallen nature, so that we can walk with Him and talk with Him. The restoration of all things is the restoration of the communion of walking with God in the cool of the day, conversing with Him. Heart to heart, spirit to spirit, because we're made in His image and God is spirit, so we speak to Him spirit to spirit, depth to depth, deep calling out to deep. He's restoring His entire body to Him. Anyways, through relationship, the first love gate. That's where we see God. <clears throat> Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Sanctification means that you get your mind renewed by the Spirit of God. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind, not just in the, the fleshly meatball, double-mindedness, unstable in all your ways side of the mind. you got to get that thing crucified. That's a cursed mindset, doubly minded. You remember when they stuffed a crown of thorns into Jesus? That was symbolic. He took every single part, that cursed mindset, that 666 beast nature mindset. He took it. I don't read anywhere in the Bible where he just took it off and threw it down. He took everything. He took the cursed mindset upon himself so he could give us the mind of Christ. He took a crown of thorns to give us the crown of life so that we can know the truth. We can meditate on things above. Not just meditate on it and like fantasize about it, but we could actually enter into those experiences. That's why Paul says to set your affections on things above and not on things on the earth for your life is hid with Christ in God. You know, set your affections there, set your mind there, set your thoughts there. Why? Lift your thoughts higher. Lift them up into reality where you've been seated with Christ in heavenly places. The natural realm is just like, almost like a distraction from the reality. And when we're in the reality, we project reality back into the earth realm to wake people up. To what? To have it as it was in the very beginning. Man was made in the image of God so that he can communicate with God, speak to God, heart to heart, spirit to spirit, face to face. <laughs> uh, and that's what the restoration of all things is. It's being restored to hear the voice of God, to know God, to walk with God in the cool of the day. But we got to be sanctified through the truth. And His Word is truth. The Word of God is, yeah, it's written here. That's Logos. But also, man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. You got to eat the living words that are energized, active, and now words, rhema words. <sighs> there's so much. If you go back to John 15, there's, there's so much in John. It's so rich. You could just eat that one book and just enter into like so many 
blissful experiences of just knowing the truth that sets you free to walk in liberty. Anyways, but I want to pray this. I'm going to start John chapter 17, verse 1. These things, holy, (laughs) these things spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven. What did he speak? Everything that he spoke in John chapter 16. I'll go back and you can take a peek at it. Let's go, let's go back a verse. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world you, you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. You know, get happy about it. I have overcome the world. Chapter 17. <laughs> If you go back to the verse that I just read, it says, and these things, so there's even more things back there. Like I said, man, it's a chain row of glory waves. Whichever way you go in the Bible, in the book of John, you can go backwards or forwards and stop at one verse and just eat it for hours. (sighs) Let's go back. I'm going to go back to 17, though, forward, I mean. Uh, These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven. And said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. Oh, Jesus, Shaka. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal that they might know thee the only true God and this is life eternal that they might know thee the only true God that they get to know thee the only real God to know thee who alone are truly God and eternal life means knowing you as the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent and your apostle Jesus Christ and Jesus the Christ whom you have sent and knowing Jesus your messenger as Christ so father I just ask for an increased knowing a yada an intimate just any any veil in our minds that we've put up of unbelief just rip and burn through it now in Jesus name we approach you by faith we come to you by faith because you're a rewarder of those who diligently seek you. And we're taking time right now just to seek you, to know you, to have you burn through our being. Burn up all the wood and the hay and the stubble in our hearts and minds and bodies. Anything that would block us, all unbelief. Any besetting sins that continually just drag us down to the depths of hell and just lock us there in bondage. Burn it all up now in Jesus' name because of the precious blood of Jesus. God, we repent from our sins. We repent from our unbelief. We repent from all these things of the lower life, the the crucified life. Now just nail us to the cross. We just place ourselves and we just die daily so that Christ can live daily through us. In Jesus' name, that old man has been crucified so that we can set our affections on you, the Redeemer, you know, Whoever's been saved from much, loves much. And we've been saved from the depths of hell, the depths of depravity, the depths of wickedness by the the kindness of God that has led us to repent, has led us to be repositioned in Christ in heavenly places, far above all the principalities, powers, and, and wickedness of the air. Thank you, God, that we have access through your beloved Son to come to you and be one. In the name of Jesus, God. Wow. And this is eternal life. I have glorified thee on the earth. Jesus is praying. I have exalted thy glory on earth. I have given you glory. I have brought you honor upon the earth. I have finished the work which thou hast gavest me to do. Having accomplished the work. Having done perfectly the work. By completing the work which thou hast given me to do, I have completed the task thou gavest me to do. God, if there's anything in our hearts and minds or anything that you've told us to do and we've not done it, I ask you just to bring it to the forefront of our minds, bring it to the forefront of 
our you know hearts whatever we're supposed to be doing on the earth that you have willed it that we will not left leave anything undone that you have called us to do and I know one thing that God has told me personally that we are supposed to do as the body of Christ he says that you are the light of the world in a city that city that's all of us a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden it's time to shine the light of the Holy Ghost blazing through our, the temples of the Holy Ghost to light up the world so that it's on earth as it is in heaven. Heaven is a place of glorious light. And the air in heaven is His presence. The air in heaven is the breath of God, life. And in Him there's no shadow of turning. There's no shadows in Him. So there'll be no more shadows. We'll just... It's the God of peace crushing Satan underneath our feet. You know, the gospel shoes of peace, <laughs> put on the full armor of God. That means just get into the body of Christ and wear him. Wear him like a, like the, like a robe of many colors, like what was that guy, Joseph? Just wearing all the promises of God, wearing the seven spirits of God. As you're abiding in him, he wraps himself around you. <laughs> Come on. And now, Father, glorify thou me with thine own self. Let me have glory with you. Honor me in your own presence. Glorify me at your side. Invest me at your side with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. This is so key. With the glory which I had with thee before the world was. That glory, that timeless glory, that, that perfect circle of love, which I enjoyed in thy presence before the world began, before the world existed, when the world had not yet come to be, which I had with thee before the world was made. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. I'm going to go back to this. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Holy Ghost. God, I ask you just to show us, the whole body of Christ, that glory that Jesus had with the Father before the world was, and who you've invited us into experience that glory because we've been crucified with Christ and we've been raised up to sit with you in that realm of glory, in that realm of peace, in the realm of your presence, in the realm of glory to glories. <laughs> God, we ask to experience that as a reality, like eating fruit from the tree of love, a tree of life, who you are. God is love. God is life. That eternal life is in you. And that fruit comes from deep within by knowing you. Intimacy grows the fruit. <laughs> so God, I just thank you for the experiencing that glory that, that Jesus had whoa, with you. Mm. With the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Yeah, I'm going to come back to that after because that's so rich there. <laughs> I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. I have revealed thy name, made known, made your very self known. I have shown yourself to men whom you gave me. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me. <laughs> they were th thy own. They belong to thee and have become mine. They were your men at first, they were yours, but now you've given them to me, and they have kept thy word. They have kept thy word. They have kept thy word. God, we treasure your words more than tr the treasures of this world. Your words are more valuable to any than any material thing. Your words are more powerful than any other words. Your words are more 
potent and intoxicating than any idol could give us. Your words are more powerful, more life-changing than anything around us that we can conjure up, think, and we can possibly meditate upon. Your words are greater. They're greater in power, greater in redemption, greater in love, greater in peace. Greater are your words than anything that this world could possibly give us. So what better things to set our affection upon than your words and to believe your words and to receive your words and to let those words take root in our heart and bring forth the fruit which you have sent that word to do. So let your words just pour through our, the soil of our hearts, God. Let your words just take deep root, root, root deep 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 inside our innermost being and that that it would just manifest out of us make us living epistles not dried up dead boned <laughs> struggling epistles <laughs> but fully energized and alive by the life of god surging through our innermost being in the secret place god Your words are truth. Um, they have kept thy word. They have obeyed your message. They have held to thy word. They have obeyed thy teaching. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. They recognize now. They have Now they have realized that whatever thou hast given me was from thee. That you are indeed the source of all I have from you. Whoa. That you are indeed the source of all I have from you. All That all thy gifts have come from to me from thee. Everything you gave me comes from you. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me. The declaration, the declaration which thou gavest me, truths which thou didst teach me, uh, for I have given them the knowledge you bestowed on me, and they have received them, and have surely known that I came out from thee. Oh. They have accepted them, and I have really understood, and have really understood. And have been convinced that I came from you, and they have come to know in reality. And they have come to know in reality, have certain knowledge that I came from you. And they have believed that thou didst send me, and they have faith, and are convinced that you did send me. And I pray for them, I pray not for the world. I have a request to make for them. I intercede for them. I am not I am not interceding, not praying for the world now, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and all things that are mine are thine, and all my possessions are thine. Yes, all who are mine are thine, and I am glorified in them Jesus you glorified the Father the Father was in you doing the works when you walked the earth you did all of his works by obeying him and now it says right here that you are glorified in us you are glorified in us not in one person you are glorified when we are unified in you and the Holy Spirit. Thank you for perfect unity in the Spirit. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. God, let your kingdom come and your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So God, he says that here that you are glorified in us. Be glorified in us. 
Let the rock of Christ come through our beings. Let the rock of Christ come through our hearts, come through our minds, come through our even our flesh that cries out for the living God. We're not going to be outpraised by a flower in heaven. God, I just thank you that you have made this available. And it's available for all the believers. The believers. <laughs> Let that presence just go through the camera now, God. Let that glory just seep through and just touch every single heart, every single mind, every single person who's pressed play, every single person in the body of Christ. Let that anointing just pour through them, setting them free, setting them free from the mindsets of the earthly realm to set them free to soar with us in the heavenly realm. Where we, are, where we are truly free in Christ Jesus, in your liberty. When you've came, you know, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory. But in you we rise. It was written that in the burning bush, you said that I came down to bring you up. Jesus went down to bring us up into this place where we are right now. So that we can behold your glory. The glory that you had with the Father before the earth was, before the universe was even existed, before the universe came out of your mouth. That glory, that glory, perfect unity, perfect peace, perfect love, perfect, just safe and secure. Not a worry in the world because the world wasn't even made yet. <laughs> Not a worry at all all for anything just perfect love casting out all fear casting out anything there was no fear there there was no shame just perfect love perfect beauty perfect radiance of your presence perfect fire perfect holiness the spirit of holiness the spirit of faith the spirit of wisdom the spirit of counsel the spirit of understanding the spirit of might the spirit of the fear of the Lord, the spirit of God, just pulsating from our hearts, pulsating for love for each other. The Word loved the Father, the, the Father loved Holy Spirit, and Holy Spirit loved the Word. And it was just this perfect circle of infinite glory and love, always ex just going higher and higher and deeper and deeper in love. We can know all the mysteries of the, of, of the world, know all the mysteries of the universe, know all the mysteries of, of even the kingdom, but without that love, it just feels empty. It's irritating. Because the highest goal is to return to the very image of who you are, which you purchase for us to return back to the image of God. And God is love. And we communicate by love. Spirit to spirit, heart to heart. Words are cheap if they're not filled with you. All words apart from love are just empty shells that just crack in the sun, worthless. No life giving fruit will come from those words because there's nothing in them. So fill our hearts with the reality of where we came from in the beginning. You breathed us. And you knit us together in our mother's womb. Mm. So that we can come into the world and to shine this reality of life. Shine the reality of our Father. Shine the reality of the glory that you had with the Father before the earth was. Wow, I can get caught up. I am totally forgot where I was. I'll just pick a random place and start reading. Okay. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father. Keep thine own 
Keep through thine own name those who thou hast given me. Preserve in thy name those whom protect by the power of thy name those whom to keep them true to thy name which keep them by the power of thy name which protect them in the name which you have given me that they may be one as we are that they may be one as we are that they may be in that realm as we are that they may be in that spiritual love as we are that they may be inseparable in the spirit of truth as we are that they may be in the realms of glory as we are that they may be in perfect love inseparable undivided Undivided by the fallen realm, undivided by the earthly realm, but totally unified as one body in Christ, as the Father was in the Son. That is coming. That is coming. Nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. And if we're in Christ Jesus, what can separate us from pouring out that unconditional love? The only thing that can cause a separation and division is soullessness in the mind of unbelief. But he took a crown of thorns to release that crown of life. Let's keep going, this is really good. Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me. Okay. That they may be one as we are one. While I was with them in the world, they kept thy name. No, I kept thy, I kept them in thy name. <laughs> I kept them safe. I was keeping them in thy name. I kept them by the power that you gave me. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept. And I have protected them. I have guarded them. I have kept them safe. And none of them is lost. Not one of them has come to destruction, but the son of perdition. Only the son of perdition, the son of destruction, except the one who is destined to be lost, that the scripture might be fulfilled. That was Judas Iscariot. Because he said, it was better for that man if he would have never been born. Because he was lost for eternity. It would have been better for that man if he was never born. But you still loved him anyway. Because that's your nature. That's who you are. God, I just thank you for the nature of Christ. To love no matter what. No matter what situation. We can't do that in human strength. We can only sacrifice our humanity to live to walk and move in your divine nature, God. By getting to know you. And now I have come to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. But I now come to thee, and I am speaking thus, while still in the world, that they may have my own joy and all its fullness in their hearts. I have given them thy word, and thy word and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Or not of the world. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, remove them out of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but thou that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. But keep them from the evil one. Protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Just remember where you're of. Have a drink. We are not of this world. So we don't have to pretend that we are. If we've been born from above, then we've, we live from above. 
the truth sets you free to let you know where you be. <laughs> We've been born from above. Man, there's so much oil on that. Born from above. And that's why we can set our affections there because that's where we are. We're seated with Him in heavenly places far above all the principalities and demons of, that try to distract us from Him. The only purpose of darkness is to, is to veil over our natural minds the truth and the reality of where we actually sit, where we've been redeemed to. All men have sinned and fallen short, but Jesus came down to bring us up back to the Father. My sheep know my voice. Jesus is in heaven. Lean your, just lean your ear upon his chest and let that heart beat at the rhythm of heaven. Just go through your entire being. His flesh was torn open so that we can go through those precious wounds into the Holy of Holies to be with Father God. That torn veil was symbolic of Jesus Christ's body being ripped open. The torn veil when the earth shook on the sixth hour or whatever, Six is the number of man. He's shaken the heavens and the earth so that we, mankind can come in and experience the living God. That veil curtain was just ripped in two. Jesus was ripped to pieces so that we can come through those wounds and experience reality. Where reality has unraveled from. <laughs> All reality comes from the author and finisher of our faith, the author of life. And we have access to him through faith in his beloved son. In the wounds, we go through the wounds, we go through the precious blood of Jesus, cleanses our conscience, cleanses our, uh, washes away our sin, washes away our iniquities, washes our transgressions. Why? So we can walk in holiness and commune with him in the cool of the day with an unstained innocence. It's not just getting saved from hellfire. It's getting healed, saved, and delivered and restored back to the position that Adam had. Adam was made in the image of God. He looked like God. He glowed like God. He had radiance and power coming, surging through his entire being. The animals looked at him and they were like, whoops, I thought that was God for a second. You know? He was made in the God's image. He was a loving, walking, love being of light and electricity. <sighs> But then all men have sinned, fallen. But in Christ we come back to Him. We get raised back up. And in our spirit, sometimes the spirit will shine that light through a body. It's very rare because many don't go that deep in Him. I've only seen it through one person. And there's enough glory just to, just to rip your entire face off. You know. finish praying this I haven't even got to the good part yet <laughs> it's all good but the great part I don't remember where I left I, and now I have I come to thee and these things I speak in the world that they may have joy fulfilled in themselves I have given them thy word and the world hath hated them because they are not of the world even as I am not of the world I pray that thou shouldest take I pray to, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world but thou shouldest keep them from the evil they are not of the world even as I am not of the world sanctify them through thy truth Hold on. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. They are no more sons of the world than I am. They do not belong to the world, as I too do not. Sanctify them through thy truth. Whoa. Consecrate them in the truth. Make them holy by the truth. Thy word is truth. 
thy message is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. Sent them? Sent them into the world? For their sakes I sanctify myself, and that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Hold on here. So everything that Jesus has been praying, it's not just for the disciples, the twelve, actually the eleven in this situation, but for us who believe through their word, what's been written. Let's read that one more time. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. But for all who will have faith in me through their message, those who are brought by their teachings to have faith in me. That's us. We're included in what's coming up right here. That they all may be one as thou father art to me and I in thee that they also may be one in us in us that thou that they all may be one as thou father art in me and I in thee that they also may be one in us in God one in God just like taking Two liquids and pouring them into one glass. Inseparable after that. If you mix tea with a coffee and you pour them into one glass, you can't separate them after that, can you? <laughs> me, me. <laughs> That's good news. May they all be one, just as you, Father, live in me, and I live in you. Let them all be one, just as you, Father, are in union with me, and I am with you. Let them be in union with us, that the world may, what? That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. That the world may believe? I thought it was just about going to church on Sunday. <laughs> hiding from the world in a little building cage. <laughs> but it says, but the world may believe. What are they going to believe? Oh, that thou hast sent me. So that the world may be convinced, so that, the, so that all men may come to have faith, that the glory, this is the part I've been waiting for, that the glory, the glory, that the world may believe that you have sent me. And the glory, the glory, the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them. The glory which thou hast given me, I have given them. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And Jesus said, And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them that they may be one even as we are one. We are not one outside the glory. In the glory is where we are one. In the depths of the innermost being of Jesus Christ it's where we are one. The glory is what makes us one. Not our doctrine, not our buildings, not our Facebook groups, not our opinions, the glory. I in them, thou in me, that they may be perfect in one. Be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. Outside the glory there is no perfection. He is perfection. The seven spirits of God. Seven is the number of perfection. 
the seven spirits of God ruling and reigning through our entire being is how we walk in perfection, walking in wisdom, walking in His counsel, walking in by walking in the spirit of the fear of the Lord, walking in God, seven spirits of God. <laughs> I in union with them and thou with me so that they may be perfectly united may be made per completely one perfectly united that they may be brought to perfect unity and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me you have loved them as you have loved me what God loves us the way he loves Jesus that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Father, I will, this is the will of Jesus. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am. Father, let me experience the glory that we had in the beginning before the earth was. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am. Where he is is in that glory that he had with the Father before the earth was. We have been invited into that glory. John chapter 17. It's the will of Jesus. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am. Father, I desire that, that these, the gift to me, may be beside me. Father, I want those to be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. That love that he had at before the foundation of the world, that glory that he was experiencing before the foundation of the world, is what we are to experience. That will change us into walking in perfection, walking in the divine nature, walking with God, hearing His voice, knowing the will of God, knowing the purpose of life, and not just knowing it, displaying it, showing it, revealing, letting Him unravel Himself through us so that the whole world will believe that the Father sent Jesus Christ. And that Jesus Christ sent us to show the world that this is so. Why? So that they can come into this perfect circle of love. This perfect glory that Jesus had with the Father before the foundation of the world. Before the universe even existed. Before all this chaos came into the world. We can enter into that glory through Him. That they may behold my glory which thou givest me. For thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. He's talking about that glory that he had with the Father before the foundation of the world. For you have loved me before the creation of the world, the beginning of the world, before the, work, the world was made. O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee. And these have known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them thy name, and I will declare it. I have made known unto them thy name. I have revealed to them and I will reveal your being. <laughs> That's good. I have made yourself known to them and I will continue to do so. The, that, the one, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them and I in them. That's unconditional love. That's the love that will cast out all fear. That's the love that will heal hearts, heal minds, heal bodies. That's the love that will restore all things back to the, its original intent of which God sent it forth to do. To walk with, you know, his friends in the cool of the day. So that the love may be felt in them, may dwell in them, may be in their hearts. John 17. So God, we agree with, we agree with Jesus. <laughs> it is the will of God that we behold Him. It is the will of God that we behold You and go from glory to glory. 
It is the will of God that we experience, we feel the presence, we feel the love, we feel the reality and not just feel it, but we experience it. We taste uh, the fruit of the Holy Ghost. We, 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 we see through a pure heart. We walk in the gospel shoes of peace. We love unconditionally by being loved unconditionally and fueled to walk in the heavenly realms with you. Thank you for renewing us in the spirit of our mind so that we can comprehend what you're speaking to us by your spirit and then we can communicate back and forth like a spirit without hindrance. We can communicate with you, God, on a level that you have desired from the foundation of the earth. That's why you created us is so we can communicate with you heart to heart spirit to spirit sometimes we don't even need words it's just the pulsating love of just saying i love you it's just the pulsating love of just you just pouring yourself into us and we have the capacity to receive that love and to walk around just tanked on that love and just let that love just pour through our the pores of our hearts and our, <laughs> our entire being to know the living god is eternal life to be in christ to be, you know, hide us in the secret place of your presence, God, from the pride of man. Hide us in the secret place of your presence, from all the fallen nature, pride, arrogance, anything that would try to get us into debates and to lies and defending things in the flesh. The best defense that we have is the radiance of your presence pouring through our hearts and minds and bodies. Thank you for making us perfect in your glory. Thank you for unifying us in the glory. Thank you that we can behold you and be changed from glory to glory and experience the love that you had with the Father, the glory that you had with the Father before the earth was. That's available now because it was available for 2,000 years. But who had the faith to experience that? Many have. But how many go? That's why the Father desires worshipers who will worship Him in spirit and truth because that's the place where you see Him when you surrender your heart and He floods you and you experience that eternal glory. It's not... There's no words. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost and inside your bodies there's a kingdom of glory and a king sitting on that throne that you have access to. I hope this message encourages you just to go deeper into the Father through Jesus Christ. <laughs>